Hello friends, welcome to Astro Crescent. My name is Pavan. In this video, I am going to demonstrate the basic steps involved in assembly of Celestron Advanced VX mount. I purchased this mount earlier this year with Celestron C8 SCT telescope. I hope this video will be useful and informative. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. These are the parts that you get in the box. I have already spread them on the floor uh, so that we are ready to assemble them. This is the actual AVX mount. So let's turn advanced VX. Spread the legs of the tripod, pull out each leg and make sure they are fully extended. You can raise the height of the mount up to 64 inches which is more than 5 feet by unlocking the knob at the bottom and then tightening it again. This is the mount alignment peg which is between the two legs. You can move it to the hole on the back side by unlocking the nut and repositioning it on the rear side. People at lower latitudes might want to do that. Next we will mount the center leg brace which will hold the mount as well as the accessory tray. Hold it in position and tighten it upwards. Make sure it fully goes up. The two azimuth adjustment knobs go into each side of the mount. Insert the knobs only halfway through so that there is enough space for the tripod alignment peg to fit in between the two knobs. Place the mount on top of the tripod. Make sure the mount sits evenly on the top of the tripod surface. Secure the tripod to the mount by tightening the center leg brace. Accessory tray is next. Remove the nut and the washer from the bottom of the center rod. Insert the accessory tray. Insert the washer and then tighten the nut again. After this we will install the counterweight bar. The counterweight bar comes with a locking nut at the top. This black cup type thing is the locking nut. Insert the counterweight bar at the bottom of the declination axis. Tighten it and then use the black locking nut at the top to secure it properly. Counterweight. The hole on one side of the counterweight is larger than the hole on the other side. Keeping the larger side to the bottom gives us little more space for balancing the scope. Remove the safety nut from the bottom of the counterweight bar. This nut prevents the counterweight from falling down just in case the counterweight becomes loose from the bar. Slide the counterweight up in the counterweight bar up to about two thirds of the length of the bar and tighten the locking nut. Replace the safety nut at the bottom of the counterweight bar. I will now move the mount to the other side to continue with the assembly process. Attach the declination motor cable, one side on top of the auxiliary ports and the other side besides the declination motor. Unfortunately I did not find a reference to this in the manual. Next is the hand controller holder. It comes in two parts. Uh, look I broke mine. So make sure you handle it with care. Place one part on one of the legs of the tripod and gently press it. Insert the second part on top of this. 
and press down firmly. Attach the hand controller. The cable goes into the port identified as HC. Place the hand controller into the hand controller holder. The groove type thing on the back of the hand controller will sit on top of the holder. These two knobs are called the azimuth adjustment knobs. Moving one knob moves the mount to the other side. The movement is in the opposite direction. Tighten the azimuth knobs so that the counterweight bar is roughly in the center of the two legs of the tripod. This is the latitude scale. You can set the mount latitude anywhere between 7 degrees to 77 degrees. Just use Google to find the correct latitude of your location and use these two knobs to adjust the latitude of the mount. The latitude of the mount must be set correctly in order to achieve polar alignment and correct tracking of the mount. For astrophotography, correct latitude and precise polar alignment are two essential things. This is the right ascension clutch lever. Turn the lever anti-clockwise to disengage the RA motor and make adjustments to the mount or bring it to the index position. When done, turn the lever clockwise to lock again. The other lever is the declination clutch lever which is just below the saddle. Turn it anti-clockwise or clockwise to unlock it or lock it and make adjustments or bring the saddle to the index position. Don't forget to lock it after making the adjustments. The AVX mount comes with dual Vixen style saddle. Telescopes with both narrow and white Vixen style dovetails can be mounted on this saddle. The saddle knobs can be moved to left or right side accordingly. I will now attach my William Optics GT71 telescope to the saddle. I have installed a Celestron Universal dovetail plate to this telescope and this goes onto the upper part of the saddle. Simply slide the dovetail into the saddle and secure it by tightening the two saddle knobs. Mounting is done, it's time to check the balance of the scope. First the declination axis. Release the RA clutch and make the mount parallel to the ground. Release the declination lever and check the balance. The balance has to be checked on both sides, east of the meridian line and west of the meridian line. Similarly, check the balance of the RA axis. If it is not balanced, you can move the counterweight up or down as needed. The mount comes with this car battery adapter cable, but I have never used it. Instead, I'll use this Celestron power tank to check if the mount was correctly assembled. This power cable comes with the power tank. Insert one end of the cable into the power tank and the other end into the power input socket of the mount, which is just besides the latitude scale. Turn on the mount from the power switch. The red indicator shows the power status of the mount. It's time to use the remote and check the movement of the mount in both RA axis and declination axis. We use the four arrow keys on the remote to move the mount. All good. Seems to be working fine. Needless to say, if this is the first time you are using a go-to mount or an equatorial mount, it takes some time to learn different functions. They are all in the remote itself. 